All right, all right. Is everyone here? Ants. Yes, sir. Roaches. Yeah, what of it? Rodents. Let's get this cheese. All right, come on, everyone. Settle down. Settle down, please. Look, we all know why we're here. We'll be eating like queens when we're through with this. That pantry's finally ours. Nobody can stop us now. Charge! Old Colony Pest Control, veteran-owned Massachusetts, Rhode Island-based operation with everything you could dream of for your pest needs. Equipped with top-of-the-line gear to guarantee your home is protected and staying healthy. Phone number is 774-400-5993. Give them a call for the backup you need. Tell them that General Red Revere sent you. They handle anything from ants, roaches, ticks, mosquitoes, rats, and more. No wildlife or termites at this time. Hey, hey, watch it, buddy. We're marching. We're marching. You son of a b Get the hell out that car! Get the hell out right now! I'm gonna tear you a new Come on! Get out! I'm gonna beat the hey, hey, I didn't know it was you. This year, my mom got me the perfect bag for back to school. These colorful binders help me stay organized. These headphones are just what I need for studying. These new sneakers are just what I need for the new year. This jacket is a real must have. My parents got me the skateboard I wanted. It's pretty cool. These scissors really come in handy in art class. These colored pencils, too. These new socks, they can be a real lifesaver. I finally got my own phone to stay in touch with my mom. Business owners of Rockton, I understand your frustration, I really do. A lifelong dream of yours is starting to feel more like a nightmare. You're constantly working on ways to improve your brand's marketing to customer service, plus making high quality product even better. But there are days you feel they're trying to stop you before you can start. So you start questioning your decision to bring your business here. Hmm. First, they make you pay $175 to register your business, but the next town over charges $35. Why? You're jumping through all their hoops and paying all their fees, but is it worth it? Because even after you get a location, opening the doors isn't something that happens easily. The city doesn't help promote businesses. Why should you promote the city to businesses? Why am I getting harassed and discriminated against by city officials? If there was an issue, why can't you inform me? So I can acknowledge the problem and make the right changes. Why would anyone want to invest their hard-earned money here when it's more like a gamble? And if I do stay, why can't you tell me the properties that are available? Should I take my business elsewhere, where it's more welcoming and business-friendly? All these questions and concerns I've asked our city officials, and for some reason, no one seems to know. For many years, I've said having a business here is very risky, and I can understand why they left. I wouldn't want to be treated like that either. Extortion and intimidation are huge problems here and they need to be taken care of. They have no business being in your business. Counselors should build a relationship with you and your staff hearing your concerns. With over 400 vacant properties, you should raise a concern to release the list. Hi, I'm Mike Smith, candidate for Ward 4 City Council. On November 2nd, vote for me, the candidate that's pro-business, bringing the workforce and revenue back to Brockton. It's time for us to speak up.
This is Beyond Marie, and you're listening to Hoobazoo.com. You still got your boombox? Play something and turn it way up. You're the dead MC, flying at my feet. You took a nine millimeter rhyme straight to your mind. Damn, my better split. This, this is my time, so I make my way up the block. Get to home base and lock that uh. up. Crack the Cavassier and grab the phone. Call one of my troops up. Hope the soldier's when he says, Yo, what's up? What's going on? Make it quick, cause I'm trying to get my Stella on. Go. Uh. You grow up in the. These lyrical assassins tried to pull a hit and then boom Came a noise from the other room It was the boys in blue with the SWAT crew They got us locked up for lyrical murder It's one of them charges that you never heard of It's the booth The booth The booth The booth Yeah, it's the booth The booth The booth yeah, we're killing all your podcasts like the HIV virus. You want to battle this kid? Huh, don't even try this. Back the uh. up, think again, count to ten. You want to grab that mic just to get done in? It's the booth. The booth. The booth. The booth. Yeah, it's the booth. The booth. The booth. The booth. Yeah, it's the booth. Was he African? African. African. No. He was American and he was like you. He looked just like you. He was Jewish. Just like you. Okay, Jew. It's an odd crime for a Jew to kill. Yeah, I'm pretty docile. Okay, so we have an African Jew wearing a hoodie. No, you don't. No. No, that's not what I said. Is that what you heard me say? I said he looked like you. Do you look like an African Jew? No, I look like a cop. Yeah. He was Caucasian. This is the one broadcasting live from the City of Champions. You are listening to The Booth. It is October 19th, 2021. We are going strong. I got to say hello to everybody who's already in the chat, hanging out with us and sitting here with us. And I got my first guest already. I love it. I love it when guests come on early and they're already sitting in the seat with, you know, ready to go, all fired up, you know, bright eyed, bushy tailed. And, you know, this gentleman here, as we were talking off air, we were talking about Zoom and how, you know, originally a lot of people didn't know nothing about Zoom and I'd have to bring people on this show and kind of teach them and run the gauntlet of how to use Zoom. But because of COVID, mm-hmm. you know, a lot of people now know how to utilize Zoom. And it's it's a, it's a great feeling that there's a lot less that I, I don't have to do now. And, you know, it's it's good. And, and as I said, my guest is on with me. We're going to talk. A little bit about his business, a little bit about the podcast. But first of all, I got to thank last week's special guest, Gary Keith Sr., who's running for city councilor job here, a city councilor at large position here in the city of Brockton. I got to thank him for coming on. 
last week's show. And I also have to apologize for my language last week. My language last week was unbecoming of me, but I was upset at what went down on our YouTube page with the racist comments. Um, they were already reported to YouTube. I want to thank everybody who came out and, you know, they were, everybody was all over it. Um, and it stinks. It, it does stink when something like that happens um, and you really can't control it. YouTube will take care of it. They'll handle it. And I'm not, I'm not too worried about it. I, I'm a big guy about karma. So as my special guest is on tonight, before I get into him, let me get into my sponsors. Michael Douglas, Beretto, MDB Electronics, 24 hours. He has your controller back, get back to game and send it out to him. He's a great dude. He does all my controllers if I have a problem. And the best thing about it is if he has to repair a problem twice, it's under lifetime warranty. So it's great stuff. Also, my recording artist, Viana Marie, her music is available streaming everywhere live on Spotify, YouTube, everywhere. You can get anywhere. You can get those streaming outlets. Check out her music, vianamarie.com. Also, Tactical Target Systems, which is uh, my targets. Zombie Apocalypse. Everybody knows I have a big fear of the zombie apocalypse, but we're going to talk about this because my fear of the zombie apocalypse might be changing. And if it is changing, I'm going to have to up my game and maybe ask Tactical Target Systems to start adding robots. And we're going to get into that conversation. RebelRom.com is my cousin's clothing line. Check her out. As you guys saw the ad, Old Colony Pest Control, owned by Carl Vanell. He's a, he's a veteran. And you know how we support veterans on the show. So Carl Bunnell, a veteran-owned business, Old Colony Pest Control, residential and commercial, 774-400-5993. Licensed and insured. Please, please, please give this guy your business. And before we get into the news booth, I'm going to get into my first guest for tonight. Um, Elion V was scheduled to be on, but he had a family emergency, so he actually will not be on tonight. We're going to reschedule his um, visit and interview on this show. So if you guys are looking for Elion V, he's going to be on at a later time. And my guest today, who's on with me, real Will Tarashuk of the Ambiguous Podcast Solutions company um this guy is a member of podcast nation which is a group that i'm involved with where we discuss and talk about production of podcasting editing of podcasting how to promote your podcast and you know there's a lot of newbies out there when covid hit and things of that sort guys like uh, kevin jeffries guys like maddie cameron um gloria shea all of these people who started to undertake podcasting when COVID hit. That was that was one of the first things a lot of people started doing. Let me get into this, you know, and they think it's a hobby. They think, and it's not, it's work. It is work. And if you want to succeed, you have to put a good product out. As people have seen, the booth has come a long way. I started out with just an audio podcast, and I'm to the point where my show is video. It's on YouTube, and, you know, I've got a nice TV-type production to the show. But some people aren't like me. They're not computer savvy is me they're not they don't know how to edit they don't know how to take the time to take audacity or, or, or adobe audition or adobe premiere you know and and be able to edit a video and things of that sort and add the type of things that you're going to see during the show so again i'm going to let you introduce yourself yet again will and talk about your business and actually what you do to help people with their podcasting and, and other things that you might offer with your company Oh yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, man. I appreciate being here. You know, I've been doing a lot of these podcasts where I'm on, on the end of yours. So it's nice to be on the other side of the aisle. So I definitely appreciate it. Yes. My name is Will Tarish. That's T's and Thomas, A-R-A-S-H-U-K. And I founded um, Ambiguous Podcast Solutions with a bunch of college friends uh, just a few years ago. And, you know, it's, it's an easy to say that we do anything and everything when it comes to podcasting. Yes, we do editing. Yes, we do. Um, Recording, promote, uh, recording, whether it's remote or eventually back to in person once we're allowed to. Um, but we also do everything else from like the marketing, the tech side. Mainly, mainly the tech side is a big one because we create our own custom RSS feed. So, like with my podcast, the Ambiguous <clears throat> Podcast Solution, um, we created our own RSS feed. We have our developer who just makes it from scratch, develops it 25 different places worldwide. Um, because if with podcasting, it's very simple. Everything needs to be everywhere always. And speaking about COVID, your business, did you begin that in during COVID or you had that before COVID? Well, here's the crazy thing. So we st technically started before COVID. Okay. And uh, my partner, Nash, my business partner, Nash, moved up from Nashville. I know, hilarious. So, <laughs> and like we were going to, uh, we were, we had like a partnership with the Elizabeth, I'm from New Jersey. We live in New Jersey. 
but we had a partnership with the Elizabeth Chamber of Commerce where we were going to pretty much run their podcasts in person, interview all these businesses for them. And that was our lead funnel. And he moved to uh, with me in with me in Hoboken Hob- in, Hob- in, in February of 2020. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so talk about timing. And then when COVID hit, you know, we really had to take a pause, reset and rethink literally everything because back then we were just going to pretty much be production and see where it went you know like we have our other business partner jared who's from montclair new jersey who knows all the marketing right like he has um very familiar with our crm partner um and very familiar with marketing tools and with podcasting like the idea of how podcasting all comes together you know there's a story of how i wrote it all on a napkin like a podcast for your business is really like an ecosystem, right? So mm-hmm. you have like the middle, your podcast, it branches out to social, branches out to iTunes, it branches out to everything else. And it all interconnects either to your business as a podcast or your business as, you know, selling furniture, being a dentist, a doc, whatever. It all interconnects. So a podcast, <clears throat> you know, number, number one tool for your business. But with COVID, we really had to just take a hard reset and really think about what are we doing? And it really was a blessing in disguise, to be honest. And to be honest, I've always, I've always felt that when it comes to podcasting, uh, there are some people and things that don't really take advantage. I've always felt like if you were a big business, like a Best Buy or, you know, some type of commercial business, I felt like a business like that should take podcasting under its wing and say, OK, look, during a year, you have your quarterly periods. I think a business like an Amazon or a Best Buy or something that the public really serves and needs, a quarterly podcast from a business like that would be awesome because now you've got your business-minded people to say, okay, I'm going to listen to this podcast this month because I want to see what Best Buy has got coming up heading into, let's say, the Black Friday season. What what are Mm -hmm. they, you know, and kind of give people those hints. I feel like podcasting still hasn't, been utilized the way it should be entertainment industry has definitely taken podcasting to a whole different realm to the point where i was aggravated because i've been podcasting for many many years since 2003 and now you see a guy like a joe rogan who's mm-hmm. getting my paid. man yeah he's getting paid to podcast getting with a capital p paid yes and then i see guys hero. like um hot 96 um hot 97 out of new york um, you see those guys, um, their morning show and, and Charlemagne the God. Charlemagne the God has mm-hmm. his own podcast, making a ton yep. of money. He's doing live podcasts at venues and selling out at forty, fifty dollars a ticket. And I'm sitting there saying, My God, whoever if, if who would ever have thought this? I seen it coming, you know, a mile away, and a lot of people didn't want to and sometimes when you're early in this game and in, in, in an in innovator kind of type of way, you kind of lose out. When you have to watch people like this who took it under their wing. Um, And I admit, uh, podcasting kind of blew up, one, because of COVID, and two, because a lot of celebrities started taking podcasting to a whole different level. Bill Burr. I love Bill Burr. He's from the New England area. He's a comedian. Oh, yeah. Boston born and bred. Great podcast. His, His podcast is great. Another thing that has taken the industry by storm and has actually changed and has made another dynamic to the kayfabe realm you and me professional wrestling man talk about it podcasting yep. how is that ch- look at how explain how it's changed that whole well business my, as a whole. my my first my first podcast was a wrestling podcast february 2015 was the first time i ever recorded a podcast two days after my 19th birthday and you know six and a half years later or almost seven be seven in february I'm still here, still doing that podcast. Shout out to the King's Rings podcast, my co-host King Ricky Rose and uh, DK Murphy. Um, live every Wednesday night, shameless plug. But you know, <laughs> wrestling wrestling podcasts was oh. something that's been around for a long time, right? Like Stone Cold Steve Austin was mm-hmm. one of the first big wrestlers to have a podcast, and now you know Chris Jericho has one. Uh, Conan even has one. Every wrestler or wrestler <clears throat> has or had a podcast, but then you have someone like Conrad Thompson who is just, he's just a regular guy from Alabama who did a radio show with Ric Flair, right? And then he started a podcast called Something to Wrestle With, with Bruce Pritchard, who was an executive guy and creative, vice president or whatever his title was, um, with Vince McMahon in the 90s, in the Attitude Era up until the early 2000s. So they just told stories about, you know, the business, because he had behind-the-scenes knowledge. 
So eventually it turned into a podcast and it became the number one podcast for, for wrestling, if not otherwise, in the world forever. And what this guy Conrad managed to do was, because he's not like a, he's not really, his radio guy isn't his day job. He sells home mortgages. So when this podcast blew up, you better be sure he was running ads for his home mortgage on that podcast, making him more money. So I use that example with literally anyone who would listen that that's why you need a podcast because this this fat guy from Alabama who sells home mortgages, this happened to know Ric Flair, this managed to finesse his way into the finest job in history talking. He has four of them. He has four of them. He has one with Bruce, uh, Tony Schiavone, um, Arn Anderson, Eric Bischoff, and Jeff Jarrett. Five of them. And, five and, times. Didn't, and didn't the WWE just recently enter like a, a contract agreement with his podcast to now be on like the WWE network? He's like the official – Guy, wasn't it? Isn't that they? Something? They were on the podcast. They were on the network a few years ago uh-huh. with, in a video portion. But Bruce went back to work with WWE. Okay. Um, a few years ago, so it's like I don't, I don't know how that relationship is or isn't. But the podcast still happens. Nothing really changed. There's more ads in it. Um, but so I can't really speak to that. But yeah, like WWE as itself as an entity. I was just like, oh, these guys need to get into podcasting. And, you know, with, with Bruce and Conrad's podcast and on the network, shortly after their show was on the network and I saw how well it did, you know, the New Day have a podcast. Corey Graves yeah. has a podcast. Mark right? Like Lillian Garcia had a podcast. Mark <clears throat> Henry has a podcast, right? But like the, that New Day and Corey Graves, they work, the WWE produced podcasts. Like, you know, so the podcast game is still ever evolving. And I think the next step is live productions. Like I like, like what you and me are doing. Mm-hmm. It's going to be a fight to who can have the best content live from home. Because right. like, you know, like this stream right here, I'm looking at it, you know, it's gorgeous. The, the, uh, the visuals, the neon, the flashing, the different things in the bottom. Like there are so many people who just do black screens from a I Zoom know it me, yeah. <laughs> on YouTube. And it's like, oh, you guys. You guys got a long way to go. Like you need something <laughs> like this or something we do at Ambiguous Podcast Solutions is that like our custom one now is just like a lava lamp that just loops back and forth. Right. Um, right. Part of what we're going to do is just, you know, hire a designer, just make a billion of them and just keep swapping them out. And then, you know, we can sell them. We can license them. You want right. to use an APS background on your video? Pay us a one-time fee and it's yours forever. Mm-hmm. And as you can see, and the guys have known, so like if you see, if you're looking at my screen and people who are watching on the right-hand side, I've got my restream chat. And every week yep. there's things that I look at and I say, so when people want to leave chat, the chat will come right up on the screen. But my thing is, is like right now I felt like, okay, that's too small. I think I'm going to make that bigger. I'm going to, it's still something that I'm working on. I have to thank my man, Frank Brack. Frank Brack, that's his restaurant that I use in the background. I've actually had some other Brockton businesses approach me and say, hey, man, your background promotes my business. What do I need to do to get my business as a background on your show? For those who are watching this as podcasting, this is the way where you say when somebody hits you up and says that, you got to come up with a, a number. And if they yeah. want to be on air, you can say, okay, I'm going to charge you this much for a background to run behind the scenes. For some of them, you might just say, hey, I don't really care. I'm just going to use it with your permission. I'm not going to charge you for that. You know, It just adds to the show and say, hey, how about you mention my podcast? On wow. your on your menus of something or that sort. This is how you you work the deal. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, it's 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 great. Podcasting has been great. And um, what what is it for you? I mean, there's a lot of things out there that you can provide and do. But what what is the biggest pet peeve that you get when people call your company? There's got to be something that just like, oh my god, if you just took the time. This <laughs> uh, people are afraid to execute. And by execute, I mean they're afraid to put their money where their mouth is. Um, that and that it's really that simple. Like you know, we are our things because we are a startup. We're a very young tech startup, and a lot of the things where we can benefit you the most because, like you know, we've talked about this before off off air. It's just like you know, production. Anyone can do it. I can teach you how to do it. That's fine. But where, like where the real things come in is the marketing, not just that the tech. The tech side behind podcasts, like people, you want to talk about the future? I know I just talk about live streaming, but the future is in RSS feeds and RSS technology. Because even if you have something like Anchor, right, where Anchor is you can only have one feed per account. So if you have multiple, you got to log in and out, and it's super annoying. With our tech, in RSS feed technology, you can have one email address be used for literally 10 million different podcasts if you wanted to. 
So we're going to have it like if you're a network and you have four different shows, um, we're going to we're going to have it so one account can handle all five feeds because if you have a network with four shows on it, you need the network feed and four individual feeds. So it's also kind of a pet peeve is like trying to explain to someone how the tech works and how it can benefit them. Sometimes it goes in one ear, out the other. They just, they just don't get it. They need to physically see it. And what you're saying is it speaks. So, so I'm co-owner of Hoobazoo.com, and we have shows that I deal with. So you would say that we would Hoobazoo.com would have its own RSS feed, and then those yep. four shows would now fall under our umbrella, and they would use that same RSS feed um, to be put like, out instead of like, having oh, their own simple RSS feed. Yeah, put it this way. So Wrestle Addict Radio is – so Kings of Rings podcast is my individual podcast, mm-hmm. correct? And Wrestle, uh, Kings of the Rings podcast is part of the Wrestle Addict Radio podcast network, right? So if you go to my you go to my page in biggestpodcastsolutions.com and go to Wrestle Addict Radio, you will see the four shows in that network, including Kings of the Rings podcast. Now, if you go to iTunes and type in Kings of the Rings, you'll find Kings of the Rings on its own, individual. Mm-hmm. That's the same for Spotify, <clears throat> Stitcher, Google – Amazon, et cetera, et cetera. Now, if you type in Fretzelmania, another show on the network, you'll find just Mr. Fretz's stuff. Now, if you type in Wrestle Act Radio, you'll get all four. Now, let me explain why that's, in, why that's important. Because someone will go, well, you're splitting your audience. Don't you want to drive them all to one place? No. <laughs> no, you don't. Because in podcasting, you, you got to get yourself out of that old school radio TV exclusivity mindset. In podcasting, exclusivity is dead. It's dead as a doornail. It's dead as Colin Powell. Um, ouch. So, ooh, yeah, ooh. ouch. Yeah, I know. I know. We're going to talk, talk, talk about Colin Powell coming up. I know. So I want to get that in there. Um, so, so I go back to, back to my point. Like, your audience being divvied up and split up isn't a bad thing if you can have the tech to integrate and get them all in one place, which is something we're developing. So, say you have King's Rings podcast gets 100,000 downloads, right? Mm-hmm. That's great. But Wrestle Act Radio only gets 50,000. That's not necessarily bad. That means Kings of the Rings podcast has 150,000. And not only that, if someone listens to the Wrestle Act Radio feed, that means they like all four of your shows on that feed, right. which means they like everything you do, which means they're more likely to buy something. So if you have a Patreon or something of extra content, you can run an ad on that feed saying, hey, Join our Patreon, five dollars a month, get extra content. They're more likely to buy it. Whereas the individual feed, you can run promotions because it's a wider audience. You can sell it to a Raycon or a BetterHelp or a uh, at a Meundies, whatever podcast promotions are out there that like to sell ads on podcasts. Mm-hmm. And you can run ads on the other shows on your network feed. Wow, I like that. And that, and it, it, here's the thing that you, you're talking about here: this Patreon. I've been looking at that as you know a way of monetizing my show, the booth. And the funny thing is, is I'm, I watch all my analytics, watch all my stats. And one of the funniest things that I talked about, like on this show, is like when I look at the analytics of my show and where I'm getting the hits and where I'm getting the listens and views. For a while there, for one month, my show was getting amazing analytics from India, and I'm like, yeah. what the hell is going on in India that that they're listening to podcasts? Like my listener base was very strong in India for a few months. And then after a while it, it did flip U S is now coming in at the top of my analytics, but that reach, it's just so weird when you go and you look at your analytics and see where your reaches are coming from. I tell everybody this story. I had one time when I first really started podcasting way back, um, we used to look at the analytics and we had this one little blip in the Antarctica that was listening to the show, the podcast that I was uploading, this sports show. And I'm like, this mm-hmm. can't be right. This can't be true. There's no way that anybody's listening to our show in Antarctica. I said, this has to be a fake. This has to be a mistake. This went on for like four months. Four months, we mentioned it on our sports show about this blip and made jokes about it. Guess what? We received an email about a week or two later. It was a gentleman who was stationed in a sub that was stationed up in Antarctica. He was in a U.S. Naval sub, and that's where he was stationed. And he was from the Massachusetts area. He was like a special, like special Naval Forces. No and he was listening to our show to be connected to home. He was that one. And I was like, holy Christ. 
So the analytics does work. It's out there. I tell yeah. everybody, I'm like, don't don't worry about it because it, it it's picking up what people are listening in. It's unbelievable, and it's just grown. I mean, it's just. Well, that's why it comes back to my main point of my philosophy of, you know, everything needs to be everywhere always, right? Because, like, you got to be careful with some distribution platforms out there. I'm going to pick on Anchor again. Let's, I like Anchor. I've used Anchor in certain mm -hmm. instances. I still use Anchor. But Anchor doesn't distribute to a lot of platforms. No, they don't. You know, oh. you got you to do it manually. Like, for example, I listen to all of my podcasts on Stitcher. I'm an Android user, born and bred. Love it. In Stitcher, I like their interface, like how it's organized. I this I love it. But Anchor doesn't automatically distribute to Stitcher. You gotta manually do it yourself. So That's why we're on Spreaker. Spreaker is my main. That's my main one. That's I use yeah, Spreaker because Spreaker does a ton of sites versus Anchor. So you're dead on, yeah. So that's like what, what we do is, okay, it's just like, well, wh how many podcast platforms are there? And I use the word internationally because, Ooh. you know, there's like a, a Ghana. I think it's G-A-A-N-A -A -A is a platform. Mm -hmm. It's just like, well, I think it's big in Europe or maybe Mexico and maybe it's India. I forget the country, but it's huge somewhere. It's like, all right, why wouldn't I put it there? Because you never know who's listening. That's right. You never yeah. know who's going to find it. So it's like, if I can distribute to 25 different places... Why wouldn't I? Why would I say no? And it's been big for military. A lot of people don't realize that. A yeah. lot of people who are in the military, yeah. overseas, station, they are listening to podcasting to get that connection back home, to get that program. Because because before, you really couldn't get much if you were stationed out in the bare desert somewhere. But if you can get a Wi-Fi signal or if you could pick up internet, a lot of these guys stationed in the military are listening to podcasts. I have someone that's close to me that's that's in the military, yeah. and he tells me it's dead on. You, you know, I, I listen to a lot of podcasts because I can, whatever I miss on TV or whatever I miss at home, I can hear about it on my favorite podcast, and it's it's great. Um, before we get into our regular topics here, because we're at 726, um, let them know how they can find you and your social media, how they can, you know, follow you or get in touch with you. Yeah, so the main place to find me is, is will at APSpodcast.com. That is my email address. Now, if anyone out there um, has a podcast and wants to be interviewed, like, so, like, I love talking to podcasters. So my podcast is called The Ambiguous Podcast Solution. Uh, if you have a podcast and want to be featured on there where I talk to you about your podcast and your journey and your experience, it's a great way for me to get to know you. It's a great way for you to get to know me and my business. We pretty much have a conversation just like this um, for about an hour, and that's will at Will at APSpodcast.com. Or you can go ahead over to inf, um, ambiguouspodcastsolutions.com. All of our services are there. All of our podcast partners are there. Our shop is there. If you need a mic, pick up a mic. You can buy it from our Shopify. It's all there. And yeah, I, I, got, I got to talk to you because because he impressed me, people. I'm not going to lie. He impressed me because he had actually reached out to me to come on his show to talk about all of this time that I've had in podcasting since 2002, you know, early on, 2003. And, you know, I he sent me a link. I clicked this link. It opens up. It has a calendar. I, you know, I set the date. I have three dates to choose from. You give people three dates to choose from. And um, it sent me a thing back saying it was going to send me a Zoom link to an it. I love that. I was like, I was jealous. I like, I need this for my show. I need this. For if, you, if you need that for your show, we can provide that for your show. Everything That's... we do is something we can provide. So we would wow. set you up with it's with it's called a power form in a Vesita with a Citrus Art CRM. Oh. So we're part with them where we can resell it. So if that's something you need, that's something we can provide. Oh, everything man, we do with podcasts is everything I personally do in my podcast uh -huh. is something we can provide. I, you just, I you just join it. our you just, you join their uh the um the partnership program. I think it's a marketing platform I, partnership, I, whatever. I loved it because right now, you know, I do everything manually. I send an email of the copy invitation of the Zoom invite to people with my whole I have a template. I have a template and I just do it. But yeah. I'm like, dude, if I have this whole setup automatic like this, that takes one less step out of me booking guests. Now my guests are gonna come to me. And they can just book themselves. And when I see yep. the dates and pick, I was like, dude, I love this. This was, that just blew me away. So that, that was great stuff. So I'll be, yeah, we'll be talking about that because uh, I, I already have other podcasts who might be interested in adding that to their repertoire. Uh, someone like a talk, talk back with Gloria Shea. Um, she's someone that, that might like something like that for her show because she's got some big name guests on. Um, yep. She's an older and it, lady, and she doesn't know how to, you know, maneuver 
the internet and, and she doesn't know how to maneuver calendars and things of that sort, this would take that right out of her hand and she would be able to book those guests when they come. I, it's great. Well, let me, let me one up you too. Cause if someone joins our partnership program, they get a coupon code. So let's say they want to use coupon code Sinister, mm-hmm. right? And they get 15% off whatever they purchase, whether it's a page, a podcast submission or editing shop, anything, right? You get 50% off. You get commission on that. You get paid. Oh. Wow. Wow. Good stuff. This was a good interview with great stuff. So actually people, Will is going to stick around. You know how we usually have people stick around and take topics with me and go along. So what we're going to do is we're going to get into the news booth and I'll let him shout out his business again. If you guys missed it, we'll let him shout out the business. We're going to get into the news booth. Uh, Boston police plan to arrest people with multiple warrants on methadone miles. So, which is funny because Will and I were talking off air Will, even though he's down there in Jersey now, he is originally from the New England area. This kid was born and bred in Braintree, South Shore, not very far from Brockton yep. at all, right down there. I'm a mass hole. I'm a mass hole, that's for sure. <laughs> and it, and it, it's funny how this podcasting thing has worked out. You know, when you talk to somebody and you get behind the scenes and you realize that you're, you have this connection and it's just craziness. So. I'm not sure if you're familiar with the Methadone Mile area. This is an area of, uh, along Mass Ave. It's about a mile strip long where uh, people who are addicted to heroin and things of that sort and homeless, they've now pretty much campsite oh, this whole mile. It's just a, it's just a nightmare to drive no, along I, I Methadone don't, Mile. I don't know about the meth, the meth Mile, but I can tell you, like, you know, even though I did grow up in Braintree, which is a very nice town, don't get mm-hmm. me wrong, there have been... It's a count. There have been eight people since I graduated high school with who were in my in that school at that time. About by that time, mm-hmm. who have overdosed and have passed away due to fentanyl and the heroin. So it's it's a big problem in Boston as well as the South Shore that people just don't like to talk about. It's like, oh, it's Braintree. It doesn't well, happen in Braintree. Well, no, it does. Here's the thing, <laughs> and I and I'll let you know that Braintree's changed their stance. Um, when you go into Braintree Center, um, they have a purple flag for every overdose for every resident for the city of Braintree and it's the most saddest thing. Yeah. Um, they just recently had their overdose awareness in Braintree. So uh the, the, the early on, you're right. Towns like Braintree, Holbrook, all these towns, they really kept tried to keep it themselves, but it got too big. And towns like Braintree, Holbrook, they're all out there. They're all about the awareness. And it's Wait, sad because, Hang- oh, Hingham yeah. has a big Coke problem last I heard. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 bad, and, and what's going to happen is is the uh, Boston police are going to start arresting people with warrants to try to cut down on that census that's down there. But it's tough because just this week it was announced that the uh, Boston police have to be careful because they've got a rat infestation down there, and there is a mm-hmm. urine issue down there where the urine is causing some type of virus amongst people down there. There's a nasty stomach bug. They've got some city workers who have been out of work for a long period of time. It's tough. It's tough. So, you know, my prayers go out to the Boston police who are going to go down there and do these warrants, but I hopefully none of these guys get sick. Also in the news booth, Colin Powell, the first black U.S. Secretary of State, passed away at 84, died from COVID-19 complications. Uh, But I see a lot of people trying to make this political because... Colin Powell was vaccinated and all this stuff, and he still passed away. And look, people, yeah. let's he also had cancer. Political. Yes, he, he also had... had cancer. All right, he died of cancer. <laughs> what cancer? <laughs> he died of cancer. <laughs> mm-hmm. And, and the he was old. Is, and the 84. thing is, is that well, the thing is, is that he got vaccinated because probably the doc, his doctor, probably said, "Hey, we can't guarantee it, but it's good to have this vaccination just in case." But he had cancer in his blood, and um, he had a weakened immune system. People, so let's not make this political. Uh, Colin Powell is a historic figure. He passed away, and it's it's tough, and my prayers and blessings go out to his family. Now, this story is down there by you, man, down in Philadelphia, and it bothers yeah, I, I me. Heard, I heard about this. It's disgusting, oh. but it's in no way, shape, or form surprising. Well, so if you guys didn't hear this story, the SEPTA train in Philly, an Amtrak SEPTA train in Philly, a woman was raped in front of passengers on this train. The sad thing is, is that... No one called 911. No one helped her. And even some of the passengers pulled out their phones and recorded it and probably put it on TikTok or whatever. Guess what, people? You people who did this are going to change laws as we know it. Because what's going to start happening is, is when we see these stories, people who film these things and don't 
act, they're going to be they're going to be charged, and you should be. You should be charged. This right now for me shows how far we've kind of dropped in society to the fact where people are going to take a phone out and re- record or broadcast a, a sexual assault, a crime as such on a public train. It's crazy. That that in of itself, I heard this that might that might even be illegal. Like the fact that they recorded that, that oh. might be illegal. It's like especially depending on the age of the woman. I don't know how old she was. But you know, there's this thing called like the bystander effect, right? It's the more people that are there, less likely something's gonna happen. Mm-hmm. But like I can understand that, but to pull out your phone and record it, you're another type of sicko. Like, what are you doing? you that that's that's worse than pretending to be asleep. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it is. And it's sad. It is, it's it's a horrible tragedy. So I don't know, people. Let's get it together, society. This is this is crazy. It's not about the likes, it's not about the views, it's not about the shares, it's not about the fame on TikTok or whatever. You gotta act, people. This is crazy. I and I'm a firm believer in karma. Now these next two stories they go together. The FDA panel endorses broad use of Johnson and Johnson booster shot. I work my regular job, I work at Logan Airport. I got the mm-hmm. Pfizer. I had to. I work in public transportation. I couldn't take any chances. I have kids. I couldn't take any chances. But I know there's a big debate out there about people about the, the you know choice and the right. And a lot of people say, well, you know, you got to get vaccinated. But the, here's the thing, people. When you see a story like this and they endure broad use of Johnson Johnson booster shot, and then last week you guys heard me talk about aspirin where the FDA is now telling people don't take aspirin every day as they had told us for the last 20 years to cut down on strokes. They're now telling people don't do it because now they found that aspirin causes bleeding in the heart for some people. And they're telling people to cut back. Here is the next story that I got to touch base on. And this is another reason why two kinds of blood pressure medication has been recalled because they accidentally put too much of a product in that causes cancer. They're going all the way back to 2008. They didn't catch this. So now all of a sudden, this high blood pressure medication from Lupin Pharma, they're telling you it's recalled. It only comes in doses of 90 or more. Um, You have to go and contact your doctor, change your, 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 your blood pressure meds and all this stuff. And hence the reason why you have some of these people who are worried about vaccinations later on down the line, because this is... Things of this sort. Um, yeah. And people who've been familiar with this show, um, 18 years ago, 18 years ago, the reason why I pay attention and talk about this is because 18 years ago, we had a pharmacist on the booth. And the pharmacist came on here and we talked about why 18 years ago did we start seeing a lot of advertising for side effects and meds and all of these lawsuits uh, this was when Fenfen came out, and a lot of women were dying from Fenfen for weight loss. And this pharmacist came on our show. He opened up to us, and it was just a scary story. Uh, the pharmacist told us that Big Pharma, all of these companies in their rush and their haste to get meds out, they now bypass the 10 years of testing, and then they what they're doing is they pay insurance companies all this money so they can get the product out and what happens is is that if something happens 10 15 20 years down the line where people end up messed up because of this guess what happens the insurance company will pay the settlement the humongous settlement so now what these companies do is is that they put all these disclaimers that you hear running at top fast lightning speed at the end of their ads and what they do is they pay the insurance companies all this money and skip the 10 years of proper testing because we don't want this other company who might be working on it get ahead of us and make all millions and millions of dollars because they're the next big thing in medical. Pay attention, people. This is what we talk about. This is the scary thing that, you know, when you bypass this type of stuff, because they already know they're going to pay people out in settlements if it happens. The last 10 years, um, we've had um, there's the surgery for when you have a hernia. Everybody was going to get meshes for hernias. Guess what? That's been recalled. Anybody who had mesh hernia surgery can now sign up and be part of a of a of a claim class action suit. But here's the sad thing: class action suits never really pay out. Only the lawyers get paid. The lawyers end up yeah. paid. Everybody oh, yeah, else gets sure. pennies. Everybody else gets yeah. pennies on the dollar. <laughs> yeah, anything you want to add to that? All the money they would have made went to lawyer fees. 
Um, well, it's on, on, on the, uh, on the vaccines. I am also fully vaccinated. I got Pfizer. Um, if you want it, I highly suggest it. I do think they work. Um, however, if you don't want it, I get it. I get it. For whatever reason, I understand. I do think it should be a choice. Um, I don't like mandates and I don't like that. We're firing healthcare workers in New York city. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't like that at all, but I think you should get it. I think the vaccines are totally safe. I think they work. I think there are legitimate side effects. When it comes to children, no idea. No comment. <laughs> if right. you get your kids a vaccine, if you're a parent, that's on you, man. I, I, I don't know what I would do. I genuinely do not know. Right. But uh, with this whole, this whole loop in pharma, man, I got enough going on in my life. I don't, don't got to worry about that. Right. Right. So, <laughs> but someone's going to get paid. <laughs> moving on, as you guys heard me talk about this whole thing, with uh big pharma and if you heard me talking about the zombie apocalypse I, you know what i, <laughs> I, I was i'm there. scared of the zombie apocalypse but in the last few weeks you guys have watched the show you got you guys have seen me share videos from boston dynamics here right here in boston they created two robots that can do parkour we saw the video of the robots doing parkour we saw a video a few weeks ago that I showed of um, these robots. I forget what it was. It was, it was these robots that were doing something else in the military. And now, oh, the robot ship. They tested the missile on the robot ship. And I was saying to people just two weeks ago, I said, we're this close to Skynet. Y'all know what Skynet well, is, right? Do, do, do you know, do you know they, <laughs> that the U.S. military, the Navy, has boats with legitimate lasers? Yes. Have you seen those videos? Yes. It's, it's Oh, my God. This, look. I, I see this story, and it's like, well, taxpayer money at work. That's all oh. it is. Like, you, you can't have health care because we have dogs with assault rifles mounted on their backs. This is, and this US is crazy. Government, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. The U.S. So government. They, they had this U.S. military expo this week where they unveiled these robot dogs with assault rifles. Now, if you've been watching Black Summer on Netflix, if you've been watching another show that somebody mentioned on Netflix, and you saw these dogs, and you thought, wow, that's pretty crazy. Here they are at the military expo. And look, it's the dumbest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's the it's, dumbest thing I've ever seen. But it's scary. Like, okay, you're now going to have robotic dogs. And I've talked and talked again about automation and here is my feeling on this. Military, please listen. Here. <laughs> Do something else! Do yeah. something else! That's yeah. it! Yeah. That's all we want! Do something else! Holy That's That's my feeling. That is yeah. my Stop. feeling right there. St Stop wasting money. All right, we just ended the war in Afghanistan, and we realized how much money was wasted there, and we had four presidents fight that war on both sides of the aisle. It's time to realize the medical you vote in office, more money's going to the military. It's Sorry. crazy. It's craziness. Craziness. It's like an open check. <laughs> heading into the Literally. legal heading into legal booth, Pembroke Donuts, Dunkin' Donuts is sued by a woman after being burned by hot coffee. If you haven't heard this story yet, uh, we talked about this on the booth many, many years ago when the old lady was burned in McDonald's. Um, and we found out the reason why, you know, you collect is because it comes down to the temperature of the coffee. Um, the FDA, Board of Health, says that your coffee has to be served at a certain temperature. If it's served at the temperature where you get burned and it causes scarring and third-degree burns, guess what? You're liable. So this woman uh, dropped her coffee, the lid, came off she was burned by the hot coffee not only she was burned by the hot coffee she jumped out of her car and was taking her pants off because she was burning and people she claims that the employees laughed at her and ridiculed her if it's on camera would, yeah i'm not she, gonna lie if i was working at like a dunkin donuts or a, <laughs> equivalent at that young they're probably like a teenager i would have laughed to be well, honest tick, i would have laughed and here's the funny <laughs> thing tiktok and stuff it it brainwashes us to believe this stuff is funny now so you you are if you saw this on TikTok, you probably would be laughing and sharing across. So we're gonna see what happens to this one, but she's she's suing, she's suing for big money, um, and we're gonna see. Also here in Boston, Governor Baker outlaws lunch shaming in Massachusetts. Yeah. If you're unfamiliar explain. with lunch shaming, what I'm is that? Explain. So lunch shaming is this: you're a kid, you go to school, you're in the lunch line. There's a nice hot lunch there, but guess what? Mom or dad or whatever you can't afford. You don't have a dollar to pay for your school lunch. So what would happen is, is that they would take the hot lunch from you and you would end up getting a cold peanut butter and jelly sandwich or a bologna sandwich. 
And what would happen is, is any of the hot leftover food is getting thrown away. So Governor yeah. Baker oh, says, God. why why throw this food away? If a kid doesn't have the money for lunch, we're yeah. not going to shame him by giving him a cold lunch. We're going to give him the hot lunch. Especially if, it, especially if it's in a public school. Yeah. That's that's taxpayer funded. He does that he or she, that child deserves a regular lunch like everyone else. Like the free lunch program is is mm. a very it's a very necessary program because it, it does help. Like lunch school lunch is expensive. I, I paid for lunch from kindergarten, well, first grade up to twelfth grade. Paid for lunch. My parents paid for lunch. Sometimes extras because I got extra. But and I didn't even know and I know, didn't, like, to be honest, I didn't even know this was a thing. This was new to me when I saw this. I'm like, do we actually have to make a law? Like this is it's insane. Yeah. Yeah, it's dumb. It's, it's insane. Dumb. Moving on into the legal booth, uh, Brockton White Pastry is ordered to pay ninety five thousand dollars to an employee after being allegedly exposed to racial slurs. The manager was using the n word and was verbally abusing this person in front of customers and staff. Oof, um, not a good look. A, yeah, it's a sad, sad story. But they're gonna have to pay up ninety five thousand dollars at White's Pastry on this one. Um, also, in the legal booth, another body was found at Fort Hood. And this is a sad, sad tragedy because they hired 14 independent military advisors to oversee Fort Hood and to make sure that this doesn't happen again. And they still got people popping up missing. They've got people showing up dead. Um, one of the people who was missing did show up at home with her family. She went AWOL. But the question is, is why? Why did she leave? So we're going to have to know. But this... Fort Hood soldier was found behind his barracks along the railroad tracks. Uh, he was 26 years old. Uh, he was a military specialist, Maxwell Hawken. And um, Fort Hood is just another tragic, tragic story. I don't know if you're familiar with Fort Hood and what's been going on there with the history of that. But um, I'm not. I have a general, a uh, 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 military guy that comes on the show. Um, he's a JAG officer. I'm going to actually save this and talk about this when he's on the first of the month and see, because when he was on talk about Fort Hood the last time, he really unloaded with both barrels, and I respected him because he says it's an embarrassment. Fort Hood is the embarrassment of this, of, of this, this, uh, not the administration, but of the military. Uh, Dave Haggerty in the chat says, all kids eat for free in Taunton public schools. I love it. They should Good. all eat free. They should all eat yeah. for free. Um, this one here in the legal booth, Vanessa Bryant is to undergo a psychiatric exam. Uh, the reason why is because Vanessa Bryant was upset at the county for releasing the pictures of her husband, Kobe Bryant, and her daughter after the helicopter crash that happened during COVID. Uh, the sad thing here is, is that they want to prove that she has suffered mental anguish. I think that's really part of the plan always. Um, a lot of people are very upset that she should undergo this psychiatric exam, but I guess in order for her to collect a payment and a settlement, um, going to have to undergo the exam. I think well, yeah. In a, in a court of law, you have to prove it. And yes. I would be shocked if she didn't have mental anguish and trauma. She, she literally lost her husband and her daughter weeks before COVID. So not only did she have to deal with all that, she then had to deal with all of COVID and, you know, that's the... I can't imagine what it's like to lose someone like a Kobe Bryant, right? And the wife, the daughter, and you you feel all this grief and sadness, but then you literally see the whole world just this this out this outcry of <clears throat> this love and support in murals and everything. Like I can't imagine what that mentally does to somebody. You gotta be feeling these two crazy emotions all at once of pride and sadness and regret and everything. So yeah, obviously she has some mental anguish. There's yeah. nothing but the best for her. Yep, so we'll see what happens. I know a lot of people are upset. Um, also moving on, I know a lot of people are in my butt and I see German Ice Stacks. What's going on, Vienna Marie in the chat, everybody out there watching. I know a lot of people have been busting my butt, but I've been following this Britney Spears story. I follow her on IG, she's a hot mess. Um, I know she has <laughs> mental issues and a lot of people are her free Britney fans or all this and that. And they don't really want to look at the deeper part of this story. I watched this new special Britney versus Spears on Netflix where um, I think we're long enough to where I can spoil it for people. But for those who have been watching me talk about this show and stuff, there are some things in this new series that she was unhappy about 
that was unveiled that people don't realize. And I've said this. I talked about it on this show. I, I had an inkling that she was sabotaging her own conservatorship, her cases. There's a scene in here where they release some documentation from court cases where she met with some people in the hotel. She signed some paperwork to get out of this conservatorship and, and get it to court. And then she turns around, goes to her attorney and tells him, I just did this, but I don't want out. And they have paperwork with her name on it saying that she doesn't mind being under the conservatorship. She just didn't want her dad in place. And the other thing that glares out to me that people should realize is that Kevin Featherline, the father of their two kids, he has custody of her kids. She pays him child support. They've been with him since this breakdown happened. From a legal aspect, people, she is not right. One of the things that Britney Spears, Britney versus Spears unveiled was, was that she was clinically diagnosed with premature dementia. If you follow her oh, IG, no. yes, she was diagnosed with premature dementia early, early, early on. This is back when she shaved her head. For people who don't understand what dementia is, you think of this as an old person disease, a person that isn't there all mentally. This is Britney Spears at age 20-something, 30-something. She was clinically diagnosed, which is why she was put under this conservatorship. When you watch this special and see how many men she latched onto, some of these guys didn't deserve to even be with Britney Spears, but because of her mental dementia, these guys ended up being with her, being boyfriends, and I can understand why the father, Jamie, was like, okay, I got to lock this down. I can't let any guys near her from the outside yeah. because she... It's just a sad story. So now what has happened is this Britney Spears has a little bit of freedom. She's still under the conservatorship. And people are like, okay, her father's out. She can get back to performing. All these free Britney people and this and that. And Britney just comes out this weekend and says she's scared. She really doesn't want to be out of this conservatorship. And she's saying that she may not ever return to the world of entertainment. She likes doing her crazy little dances on IG. But yeah. she may not want to go out into this big world. So people pay attention Mental health is a big issue. Please take it seriously. Don't put selfish needs before others' mental health. She's obviously, I've watched her Instagram, and she obviously has some mental issues. I'm going to let you my advice. That. My advice to Brittany, <clears throat> run, 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 run. Stay out of the public eye as much as possible because the public eye will chew you up and spit <clears throat> you out like they've already done to you. And you deserve better. Like you, you, you clearly need time just to literally rebuild yourself, become your own person again, and focus on yourself. And if there's a time where you might be ready to become the public eye, still don't do it. Just avoid the public eye, avoid the press, avoid everything. Don't even start a podcast. If Britney Spears came to me and said, "Hey, Will, I want to use the service to start a podcast," I'll say no for her benefit. <laughs> oh, I like, oh man, I like that. I like yeah. that. Man, I'm just like, I'm just like, listen, I, I, I seriously think if you want to do what's best for you, Brittany, just avoid everybody and don't, don't even, don't take anyone's advice you don't know personally, like right. very, very well. Right. Screw everyone. Yeah, there you go. I know Viana Marie, who's in the in the chat watching the show. She's been saying it. She's been saying. She said the media when she the whole Justin Timberlake, the media ripped her apart over that, and and they never looked back. You know, and they, and it's been that way. Build her up. Tear her down, build her up, and tear her down. So we're going to move on. Heading into the entertainment booth. Ooh, I'm pretty excited. DC Fandom was this past weekend. And look, DC Fandom was so good this weekend that they released trailers for Black Adam, featuring The Rock, Dwayne Johnson. My guy. Yep, they released a trailer for Peacemaker, which is a spinoff from this new Suicide Squad. With My guy. Boston Zone. West, John West Newberry, baby. Yep. John Cena. They also released the trailer for Flash. And then best of all, they released the trailer for Robert Patterson's Batman. I've got all four trailers. We're going to blow through real quick for you guys. But here's the thing, people, on this Batman trailer. Look, Let's go, Batman. Dark. This is the Batman we want. And I'm not going to lie. When they cast Robert Patterson as this Batman, I'm like, that's the Twilight dude. Like yeah. I didn't even watch. Oh, he's Twilight he's a he's a real he's a really good actor. He is a really really. If you want to see a great performance from him, watch the movie Lighthouse with him okay. and Willem Dafoe. Phenomenal. He's really? a great actor. He's going to surprise a lot of people. 
No, well, he's a phenomenal actor. He looks great in this trailer. So what we're going to do real quick right here, we're going to blow through these trailers. You're going to see Black Adam, Peacemaker, The Flash, and Batman. And then we're going to be back with more Booth. Here's the trailers right now for Black Adam. I've never seen the likes of it before. Having done James Bond for 10 years, four films... Nothing compares to this. I play Hawkman. Cyclone. Adam Smasher. Dr. Fate. Leading the whole charge is Dwayne Johnson. He's more brutal, uncompromising, fueled by the depths of his pain. He's Black Adam. Black Adam. Hey, DC Fandom, and hello to everyone watching around the world. I am so excited right now to be here and to talk to you about the man in black himself, Black Adam. Now, as you guys know, this character, this film, this universe has been a gigantic passion project of mine for a very long time. And I have worked so hard, worked these hands, these calluses, my fingers to the bone on this project because it's the kind of project that I know comes along once in a lifetime. And the truth is, I was born to play Black Adam. Now, we've just started the post-production process, which is so exciting. And the film has, without question, some of the biggest action sequences I have ever been a part of. And I am so proud and excited of our incredible team who are working away to create breathtaking, holy shit, scenes that I know you're really going to love. Now, even though we're still working away, this is DC fandom. So I felt like I had to bring you guys just a little something special. Now, you know me, guys, and you know, I always like to say that you, the audience, the people, you guys are my number one boss. So I got together with my director, Jalma Colette Serra, and we put together a little glimpse of one of the opening scenes of the movie when Black Adam is first revealed. Now, what you're going to see here is why the hierarchy of power in the DC universe is about to change. I hope you enjoy this very first look at the man in black himself, Black Adam. Does that mean? Truth is, I'm supposed to be in prison. For what? Superhero stuff. What superhero are you? Peacemaker. Get out of here! There's no superhero called Peacemaker. Dude, I'm famous. You're a born killer with expertise in every weapon on the human kind. I'm giving you the chance to stay out of prison and work for me. Kill people.
bad people. This is hardcore. We are handling the field. John Economist, Tech and Tactics. And this is our new recruit, Ade Bayo. You don't have to shoot people after you already killed them. Right. Who's the guy that's peeking out behind the trash can? Vigilante, he's trying to be helpful. <laughs> Our first target is Senator Roiland Goff. Goff may be traveling with his family. Are you sure those two kids came out of those parents? That's an attractive couple, and that one looks like it came out of them, but the other one looks like a butt baby. A butt baby. Yeah, my older brother told me there's two types of babies, one that comes out normal, and then butt babies. Worse in every way, they come out of a woman's butt. No, I believed I was a butt baby until I was like 14. That explains a lot. There's something about him that's sad. Hey, Dad. I didn't mind, Sparta. Go into a Nancy boy like you. No, lately I'm just like a maniac. Hey, no! No! That's because we're born killers. What separates us from other killers is we only kill bad people. Usually. Unless there's a mistake. You use being a jerk as a way to push people away. Ha! <laughs> you suck at PowerPoint! But if you would just drop that... People actually might like you. Grab my phone, I don't want to move. Dad? Greetings, DC Fandom and Domers. Ezra Miller here. Live from the set of The Flash, it looks like this. We're very excited to show you the movie, uh, and we can't yet because we're still making it. We wanted to show you a teaser, but we can't because we don't have enough material to make a teaser yet. We, we can't make a trailer, uh, but we do have this small sneak peek that my maestro Andy and I have put together that we really hope you'll enjoy. And I will see you in theaters later next year, or more importantly, you will see me. Tell me something. You can go anywhere you want, right? Any timeline. Any universe. Why do you want to stay? fight to save this one. You change the future. And you change the past. It's not just a call. 
is a warning. Before you've nothing left. I don't care what happens to me. It's only gonna get worse for you. Whoa, take it easy, sweetheart. Hear everything they say, ain't you? Maybe we're not so different. Who are you under there? Back here in the booth, broadcasting live from the City of Champions, um, and I'm here with my guest Bill Tarashuk, and uh, we just got through Black Adam, Peacemaker, The Flash, and Batman that were just released at the DC fandom. I'm ecstatic for this Batman. That's why I showed it last. I, I can't wait. Will? Oh yeah, I love <laughs> Batman, man. Batman, Batman's the way to go. And you swear by Robert Pattinson, huh? I'm telling you, I'm telling you, he's going to surprise a lot of people. That whole, that whole Twilight stink that's on him, that's going to go away. I promise you. I promise you. Okay. I'm, I'm going to take your word for it because I'm looking at these trailers, the two trailers that they've released, and I'm like, damn, he's looking really good at playing Batman. And this, this is the dark Batman, so I, I can't wait to see it. Uh, moving on into... Let's see what we got coming up here. Uh, moving on, Peacemaker Batman trailer entertainment booth um new mac because i'm a dj releases a self-contained dj controller console when i say self-contained look self-contained speakers are built in you no longer need a laptop you do everything right through the controller as a dj this is phenomenal it's great but guess what i play nightclubs i've done stadiums i can't the speakers in this is great for house parties and bars and things of that sort it's not going to be able to do what I want to do, but I'm telling you right now, if you're thinking about getting into DJing as a business or just as a hobby, I would tell people this is the this is what you're going to want right here. This is the DJ standalone. You don't need a laptop. You will be able to access your library by utilizing Spotify or iTunes or any of these music subscribers. So you'll have all this at your at your fingertips. Again, if you're somebody out there who's looking to start out as a DJ, this is at the top of my list. So you want to make sure you check this out. Umark's Mixstream standalone DJ console. You won't need to buy any expensive speakers or any type of special laptop to do house parties or maybe a bar or something with, you know, a small venue. Small venues. I'm thinking maybe a place that holds like 100, 100 people. But, yeah, it's definitely something you want to look into. Um, Bruno Mars just announced New Year's Eve. I've never been to Vegas. I'm sorry, but Me neither. I, if I have to go to Vegas this year to see Bruno Mars, I might just do that because Bruno Mars is one of my most favorite artists out there. And to see a New Year's Eve show in Vegas with Bruno Mars is going to be, it's going to be amazing. He's the modern day Michael Jackson, modern yeah. day Michael Jackson. Yeah. So guys, Book your tickets, get out there, check it out. Uh, Hot Ones. 
talking about rappers here. Megan the Stallion was on Hot Ones. This is the, 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 the Buffalo Chicken, the Hot Wings show. And I talked about Cardi B last week. And I, I want to bring this up because Megan the Stallion is a rapper. And some people don't take her serious because her rap music is sexually charged. But here's the thing. You see a lot of these dumbass rappers get a lot of money and they spend money stupidly. Like we saw a little Uzi Vert. He went and got a $2 million diamond and planted it in his head like he's the Vision from the <laughs> Avengers. And does a concert and has the diamond or whatever he had put in his head ripped out. So now the insurance that he had to pay on it's got to cover this stolen diamond that was ripped Ow. from his head. And it's like, yeah, it's like, look, guys, rappers, if you want to know how to invest your money, pay attention to Cardi B and Megan Thee Stallion. Last week, I talked about Cardi B. Her birthday came up. Her boyfriend, husband, Offset, she, he asked her what she wanted for her birthday. She said investment property. So what Offset did was he bought property in the Dominican Republic and the Caribbean, and now they can take that property and build hotels and rent hotel rooms. Cardi B is making her money work for her as an investment instead of spending stupidly. Meg Thee Stallion, who's the butt of all jokes and all this stuff, but guess what she just did? She just invested her money into four Popeyes franchises. It's such a big deal that now Popeyes is releasing a Megan Thee Stallion Hot Ones meal at Popeyes to look and and congratulate her on purchasing four franchises. Now, a franchise is usually around thirty to fifty thousand dollars. So let's just say she spent fifty, fifty, two hundred grand on the Popeyes franchise. Guess what, people? That's not spending your money stupidly. That's taking two hundred grand and what she's going to turn that into as a profit. You're a businessman. Let them know. Let them know. Will this is what it's all about? Turning now, normally profits. I'd... Normally, I'd say uh, take your financial advice from Meg the Stallion and Cardi B with a grain of salt. Uh, but if he's speaking specifically to rappers, they both of them actually, and what rappers should do with their money, being in the field, with personal experience. Man, you convinced me. Marcus, I, I saw this. I saw this bullet point in the list. I was like, wow, that's gonna be hilarious. No, man, you convinced me. Apparently, they're really smart with their money, and it makes sense. You see the same thing as professional athletes. Like mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> athletes go broke all the time, and I, I think, like, listen, if you're a college athlete and you're going to go into the professionals, let's not pretend that you're there for a degree, right? You're not there for your phys ed major or whatever. But what they should be doing is have your college major is literally professional athlete, where they teach you what to do about your money and how to invest in things. I think it's a phenomenal idea. How to, how to deal with the media, how to not get in trouble, how to not be like Ben Roethlisberger, right? And um, I, 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 think, I, think, I think if Meg Thee Stallion and Cardi B <coughs> are doing smart things with their money, people are going to listen to them, especially rappers. So, yeah, I think that's a great story. It's a great find. Yeah, it's good stuff, and I wish people, more people would listen. Um, in another story, Dave Chappelle doesn't have to respond to critics in my book for his new – show the closer his new stand-up comedy i act we actually saw him perform this live Fantastic. down in connecticut it is such a great if you if you're mad and you're upset you didn't pay attention to what the man was trying to tell you exactly. if you listen from exactly. beginning to end and now this is it right here people this is the end all of end all you can say whatever you want but the family of daphne has come out and they are in full support of dave chappelle they said that he did befriend her like he said. They, he did start this trust fund for his child. Dave was very close with Daphne. Everything he spoke was true. So anybody out there who's upset and trying to cancel Dave Chappelle needs to stop. And this is coming right from Daphne's family, who that whole thing was based upon. And I think he spoke from the heart. And people, again, you just gotta, you just gotta stop. You just don't get it. I don't get what these people do. But again, here you go. Stop doing that. Stop. Yeah. I mean, when it, when it comes to Chappelle, he's in my top three, hands down, top three. It's him, Carlin, and like Richard Pryor, right? Greatest of all time. Um, and people heard what they wanted to hear, not what they, not what he actually said. Now, listen. If you're upset, I get it. I totally get it. And you have every right to be upset. You have every right to voice your opinion. You have every right to see how you're feeling. 
It's not a podcast. I totally get it. Um, however, you saying that he should be canceled or he should be taken off Netflix or Netflix should do this, this or that, there's something wrong there because that doesn't solve anything. What does that solve? What does that solve? And you proved his point. You know, Daphne, if you don't know the story, you know, she got a lot of heat from the community for defending Dave. And, you know, we don't know, but that could have been a reason for why she did what she did. So you going out there and just doing the exact same thing that led her to kill herself isn't solving anything. <clears throat> you getting mad and saying we should cancel Dave Chappelle and Netflix should boycott Dave Chappelle, that doesn't solve anything. That doesn't solve anything. Dave Chappelle solved things. He talked, right? He befriended. He had all these stories. He started a trust fund. You know, he did, he's doing way more than what the Twitter mob pro- proclaims to be doing. <clears throat> so that this, this, the, the, <clears throat> the, the, the special itself, not his best work, not the funniest, but goddamn, he told a story. He That's had right. a message and it was phenomenal. I loved yeah. every second of it because it was a, the closer's the perfect name because he had like a five, seven series, whatever contract mm-hmm. with Netflix. This is the last one. And he literally, the whole act is his closing act. And it was, as, a, as like a writer and a storyteller, poetic justice. Phenomenal. Outstanding. Yeah. It was, it was. And I, I, I think the ice on the cake would be if it gets an Emmy next year. You know? So, Sports Booth, heading into the Sports Booth as we wind down the show. I, I got to give big props. Rest in peace. Um, I got a guy... Gray Warren, who I did draft in the circuits with for many, many years. He passed away due to cancer. Um, prayers and blessings go up, but I got to give props to this guy. He was one of the low-key funniest guys that I've ever done a podcast with. His humor was just different, and he brought something to our show, being part of DEI and all of these other NASCAR race circuits. Uh, my prayers and blessings go out to Gray Warren, his family, and all of us at DTC and Hoobazoo.com and Man, Candace, Ronnie Crepain, we all lost a piece of us last week. So rest in peace, Gray. You're in our thoughts. Uh, Patriots dropped the two and four against the Cowboys in overtime. It was a great game. Um, all you people talking about the defense and this and that. Look, the, the team isn't that bad. They, you know, they, they have a field goal that was missed. This game could easily be five and one right now, um, but they're give not. Them, give them time. Yeah, right? exactly. Like don't, yep. don't do what the Jets do which is just, if it doesn't work for one year, you get rid of them. Look at Sam Darnold right now. Having a great season. I didn't want to Having bring a up great that season. Part. I didn't want to talk about that. I, I didn't know if right? he was hurt. But it's just like, give, give, give the team time. Give them time. <clears throat> yep, yep. So, and uh, guys, game four, Red Sox tonight. Uh, they took the other game the other night against the Astros. And um, we're on our way. Let's see what happens. But, uh, you know, Chris Gagne was in the chat, says he's got to get off. Um, he's got to go check out the Sox. No problem there, because that's where I'm going after I get off of here. Um, heading out, we're getting ready to close out. Biden bombshells. Biden and the White House are still lying. And that, and that, and the reason why I'm bringing this up is because a lot of people beat me up because they felt I, I, I Trump bash. I, I'm not. I'm a political guy. I call it out when I see it. And I talked about this last week, and I said, don't do this on my show again, because I'm going to have to do this. And... They're doing it. Again, Biden in the White House, who, you know, we all, a lot of people supported and voted for, and he got in. Um, But they just released this thing. Jobs created in the first eight months of his being elected. And again, I'm I'm a political guy. I know how this works. Please. I I felt like I wanted them to stop with the spin. I'm not a fan of political spin. And you're doing yeah. it. They're doing it. Jobs created in the first eight months. Well, the reason why we have four million jobs versus the one million three last year is because we're coming out of COVID. So again, yeah, let, let, why let, let, let's pause you... right there. Can mm-hmm. you really say they're jobs created, or are they just jobs you let you let be let let be jobs again? Mm-hmm. Right. The government shut the government mm-hmm. shut down the economy. These jobs aren't created. These jobs are back. Right, they're right. not created. That's not created job. That's a lie. That's what it's. It's spreading the truth. Mm-hmm. It's spreading the truth. Do something else. Holy. <laughs> I mean, here's something I, else. I, I I do love talking politics. You know, I did have a podcast called You Mad Bro, which we talked all politics and changed for American Mans, which has since disbanded because it's very hard to do a political podcast now with adpocalypse and making money. It's just not worth the time, honestly. Right. But. I don't, I don't care if you support Joe Biden. I don't care if you vote for Donald Trump. Personally, 
we had four years of Trump. It was bad. It was bad. There were a lot of issues that 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 existed before Trump, a lot of issues that exist after Trump. We're going to have four years of Biden, and those problems that existed under Trump are going to still be here, if not worse, under Biden. So it doesn't matter who you vote for because all the money is going to go to the military anyway. <laughs> That's why I said the rich get richer, the poor get poorer. And again, they're talking about retail sales are up 14% than they were last year. Yep, again, because we were under COVID, everything was closed. People weren't spending money other than other than when they got their their checks but now people are back to working people are back to going out and doing things and retail sales are up because of this it has nothing again to do with administration and policies so here we go again i gotta play this one for you again why the f- you lying why you always lying oh my god it's just it just bothers me and progress and unemployment the same thing the same thing. So please. Well, half a lot of the country's on strike too, man. A lot of people across the whole country are on strike. Workers are done. <laughs> they are fed up. They saw how rich these corporations got. They're like, oh, you're not gonna give me my peace? Well, guess what? I'm not gonna work for you. We're gonna we're gonna tank this economy together. And another thing we learned, it's that like we outsource as a country way too many things to Asia and like Africa or different parts of the world. Like if it's, it's just, we don't produce things here. I believe Elon Musk said it the best. If you're not making stuff, you have no stuff. And America is not making stuff. So right. yeah, the, econ- the, the, the sales numbers might be good, but that money isn't helping the U.S. economy. It's helping the foreign economies that we imported it from. Right, that's right. And here's the other thing too. There are a lot of people who shot themselves in the foot as we get ready to close out the show. A great example of this unemployment thing. Um, you know, you see a lot of people say, hey, if you just paid people decent wages, uh, yeah. people would come back to work. Great example. Uh, P.S. Express, which is located in South Boston, it's a coffee shop. And they actually put out a whole and this is where businesses who try to run their own social media can kill themselves. P.S. Express put a whole post out on a Friday and said that they're now going to be closed on Mondays. Because unemployment is keeping people fat and they don't Uh-oh. want to come back oh, to no. work. Oh, no. No, after, they didn't. After they already had stopped benefits two weeks prior to people. So P.S. goes on this whole rant and blames that whole thing as the reason why they need to close on Monday and can't find. So here's what happens to P.S. Express. First of all, all the former employees of PSS, P.S. Express pop up on their Facebook page. And we get stories about, oh, okay, you want to claim that, yet you pay us $8 an hour while your family goes to Greece to your house every year and celebrates their vacation and closes the place up for two weeks while you're in Greece on your boat. Then what happens is they try to defend themselves, and then someone goes and pulls up the accessible to the public profit report, where it showed that they had 19 employees... (laughs) at their business and they made the amount of money that they made was like obscene. And then the person said, but yet you're only paying your employees $8 an hour when you could afford to pay. And they broke down how much that they could have paid employees and still made for a profit. They tried to defend themselves again. And what happens? Somebody releases a government statement that the owner put in and applied for PPE and got $80,000 from the government, mm-hmm. which he didn't. And that, and I'll tell you, I've driven by PS Express now in the mornings, and guess what? Business ain't booming like it used to be because a lot of people jumped on their Facebook page and says, hey, I'm not doing business a hole anymore. Sad. Yeah. And this is why we have this. This is exactly why, because some people are just fed up for working for pennies on the dollar. And they should be. They totally should be. I totally support this workers' revolution that's coming. That's coming from someone who loves his job, who's paid pretty well, who's doing pretty damn well for himself. Like I, I am. I realize that I am above the curb in in a lot of situations, right? But mm-hmm. I understand that that so many people are fighting that literally can't do anything. Like I hear stories of these strikes, they think the Kellogg strike going on right now and how many days they work and how many hours they work and how little benefits they get. It's just like. Oh, I had no idea. I work in Times Square two days a week and three days from home. Like, Mm. I sit in this couch and rock back and forth like this (laughs) all day. And I enjoy every second of it. And there's people out there that's literally fighting 
for their rights for right to work. It's ridiculous. I'm a contractor, right? I'm a contractor. Some contractors don't even have benefits. I'm lucky I have health benefits. Mm. Not the best, but I still have them. Like it's, it's crazy. So I do think this country is on the brink of a revolution. And I don't mean like civil war, we're going to secede from the union and have another civil war or revolutionary war. I mean a workers, like we're this close to a general strike. Right. And it is one thing this country runs on, it's money. What causes the problems? Money. What solves the problems? Usually more money. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Good. good great. That, I'm, I'm going to leave it at you. I'm not even going to add to that because that's exactly a best way to sum it up. Hey, guys, I think we got to get ready to close out the show. I got one last question for him before we get out of here. But everybody out there checking out the Sinister One beanies, um, I'm going to be putting an order in, getting those Sinister One beanies. I got to thank everybody who's been buying the beanies, wearing the beanies. As you guys can see, a couple of DJs there, Bobby Steele's. Uh, my my barber is there, UFC fighter, Mr. Barrett, Peter Barrett, wearing my sinister one, pointing on Viana Marie, Travis Proddington, happy hour with Lito's Kevin Jeffries, Matt Cameron from Matty C Sports View Me, uh, recording artist Ty Hunt, recording artist up here, Mr. Melodic, who just opened up for The Locks down in the Strand Theater, wearing my hat, and there's the four podcasts that I'm involved with right there, Oscar Mike Radio, Maddie C Sports for You Me, Happy Hour with Lido, Talk Back with Gloria Shea, and now you can add She Talks Football Podcast to my Sinister One Productions free. And um, as we talk podcasts and get ready to get out of here, I got to thank my guest again on Will. He's been on with me for this whole hour. He's been holding it down. He's got a company that can help your podcast. So you want to make sure to reach out and check out Ambiguous Podcast Solutions if you need help with getting your podcast done or created at that professional level, business level. But before we get out of here, my last question for you is that we have this debate on Podcast Nation about video podcasting, which is what I'm doing, which is what you've talked to people about. Um, There's this whole thing that vodcasting isn't podcasting. And I just want your thoughts on it, and I got to hear what you have to say before we get out of here. Yeah, videos, I'm surprised that video is such a debate in the podcasting space. And... It's the big old question, is it necessary? And my answer is the question is irrelevant. The question, the debate is stupid. It's completely irrelevant because podcasting, there is no standard. Radio, there's a standard, right? There's like harbor hours where you can actually curse and things. I think that's what it's called, right? There's certain, in TV, there's certain rules and expectations you have to have to be on CNN or Fox News or what have you. Podcasting, it's still the Wild West, man. There's like it's becoming an, an industry in a space, but you really can do whatever you want. So if you want to add video to your podcast, great. If you don't, also great. It doesn't make what you're doing any less more or less important. Now, I will add the caveat. If you are a business trying to sell something and create a brand, yeah, video is 10,000% necessary. That's 100% necessary because remember, everything needs to be everywhere always. If you're just two Joe Schmoes talking about the Yankees in your basement, no, don't need it. If you're doing this as a hobby, no, don't need it. Is one way better than the other? No, the arguments are relevant. Nice, good stuff. I had to let him speak on it because, like I said, I'm in this group <laughs> podcast nation with him, and the, and the debate goes back and forth. There've been people banned from saying stuff, and it's like you know, it's like we're innovators. You know, there's really no, like he said, there's really no standard really set yet. It's still evolving. Like I said, I started this thing in 2003. And nobody wanted nothing to do with podcasting. Now you've got celebrities out of the woodwork doing podcasting. Joe Rogan, Bill Burr, everybody's got themselves yeah. a podcast now. And they and let's be honest, they've added money to their brand. Joe Rogan is an exclusive now. You know? So he's getting paid money for podcast on top of you know what he's put out there from the get go. So it it's great to see, um, but can it be done? Like I said, it it doesn't matter. And like he just said, however it fits your need and however, but business wise, yeah, if you're a business, definitely need that video podcast. And it's, a, it's yeah. a nice way to connect to your clientele and potential people to invest in your business, to be honest. And it's, it's a great networking tool. And pardon the pun, podcasting is very ambiguous for a reason. Mm-hmm. So I got to thank Will for coming on here again. Let them know how they can find you, Will, before we let you go. 
Yeah, man, the best place to find me is at my email address to be a guest on any of my other podcasts. So the first podcast is the Ambiguous Podcast Solution, where I speak to podcasters about their podcasts, what they do, their journey and their goals, etc. Pretty much if I find you interesting, you welcome on the show. The other podcast I do is called Talking with Tara Shuck, where I speak to anyone I generally find interesting. The one, in, the one <clears> caveat <throat> is you can't have a podcast because otherwise you'd be on the Ambiguous Podcast Solution. To find more about my business, head over to ambiguouspodcastsolutions.com. Click that search services tab you'll find more of our um our partnerships you can get your page on the website to go to the podcast page um you can get it replicated just how you like it all social media integration for just 25 dollars for a full year having a page if you have a network we even will even limit down so if you have four on a network we'll do it for like 75 bucks i don't know we'll figure it out um it's all integrated. You get a coupon code. So if you get a coupon code, it can be whatever you want. You get discounted services. And if you sell, if you help us grow, you get paid via commission. You get a donation tab. If someone wants to support you, 100% of that money goes to you, goes to charity, goes to your mom, your sister, your dog, however you want to spend it. We don't touch that. It's all yours. Ambiguous Podcast Solutions.com to find everything. I look forward to hearing from each and every single one of you and talking on the podcast. That's what I do. I sit in this chair and podcast pretty much all day. Nice, nice, nice. So before yeah, we get that's a mouthful, here, man. I, I, I really got that done. That's, that's a mouthful. No, that's <laughs> a good show, man. This is a great, this is a great hour and a half. Uh, before we get out of here, I got to mention Cage Titans Fifty is coming up, and it's the first time ever anyone has ever had an MMA event where you're going to have matches starting at noon, and then they're going to have matches at night. And Mike Polavera is going to be coming on this show, I believe, next week to talk about this big event that's going to take place November 3rd on Saturday at Plymouth Memorial Hall. Your boy is planning on definitely being there for both of these events. Cage Titans 50, the card is going to be stacked. A lot of your local fighters are going to be coming out and fighting at this event. Also, I'm going to be DJing at the Operation Hope for the Home Front, which is November 20th, to raise money for PTSD. 100% of the funds, I believe, is going towards this. I'm going to be DJing that event. And that's about it, guys. I think we need to get out of here. I got to thank for those who showed up at the uh, Murder the Mic event and the applause for the cause. And um, SpongeBob, I need you to do me a favor. Can you take us home? Like right now, SpongeBob, please? Well, see you next Tuesday. Thank you for listening to The Booth on Hoobazoo and HatcherRadio.com. Please follow the Facebook page and subscribe to the podcast at Apple Podcast, iHeartRadio, and Spotify. The Booth is a Sinister One production hosted by Sinister One. I've got to start hanging out with friends that are a little more intelligent and understand politics and stuff. It's just that I'm up on this level up here and all my friends are down here. Me, nah. You guys, nah. Maybe a little more down, down in here. Screw you guys, I'm going home. I smoke, I drink, I do my thing. These bitches hating, so you know I got to make it plain. Don't do cocaine with your chick, my main. We stick together, true forever, yeah, you know we bang. I miss those days, which was easy. If only I made it, bitch, don't repeat. Now that I done upgraded, I've been upstate and y'all think I'm playing. And I gotta hit now for these weak ass hoes who think I ain't slaying. Try me, try me, and I'll probably end up laughing cause I never back down. I'm that chick with a clean ass whip. I don't need that shit, it's like I'm my own now. I get hurt, I get tired of fussing, fighting, guess I gotta crack down. Don't mess with me, cause on everything, I'ma have to bring the whole city out. W-H-O-O-B-A-Z-O-O-N-A-T-O-B-A-Z-O-B-A-Z-O-B-A-Z-O-B-A-Z-O-B-A-Z-O-B-A-Z-O-B-A-Z-O-B-A-Z-O-B